Hello folks, welcome. So today's video I have on MX, um, the XFCE desktop, I'm going to talk about automated backups. Basically syncing your personal folders or work folders, doesn't matter, to a USB device such as a stick or a USB hard drive. In either case folks, welcome. Um, this is MX and the XFCE desktop. So. I'm just going to make mention of this briefly and then we're going to continue. Um, all of my videos have timelines or chapters on them and uh, I encourage that you also read my um, about section if you want to subscribe. I do make a statement on there that uh, Linux is for every age and also in my community tab I will have some tips for you on searches because my previous YouTube site had over 450 videos. My current YouTube site is up to 90 and it makes it easier to search for keywords uh, if you're not too sure how to do that. In either case, folks, welcome. So I have some things sitting up here and then I have a USB drive plugged in. This is a USB hard drive that is uh, 200 plus gigabytes connected to a USB 3 cable with a blue light on it. So I bought an enclosure for 12 bucks on Amazon that came with a cable and threw in one of my hard drives. You can also use a USB stick, and I'll cover that in a second too, or a little bit later. So I have some things over here that I'm, I'm gonna automatically back up things using uh, script files. Now, a lot of people will hear that word and immediately turn off the video. I would say continue watching because I'm gonna basically use less technical jargon and basically show you how to do this completely from scratch. So hence the video will be more than two minutes, but again, they all have timelines and chapters. So Bob's work stuff. So let's talk about Bob. Bob is our fictitious character for today and he has some work stuff and he has regular documents. He had stuff in his download folder. He's got some music folders and files and some pictures or wallpapers. We get to go on that. So this is the plugged in USB hard drive that has roughly 200 gigabytes. Okay, all I did was click one icon and it just started backing up his work stuff. Okay, now my drive light is finished and basically all my files are done. These are exact copy of what this is. So this is Bob's music. So I'm gonna do the same over here. Now Bob's music folder is a little bit more intensive as far as bits and bytes. So my drive light currently is flashing. That means it's still backing up. All right, so anytime you're gonna be doing stuff like this in the future, uh, I'll show you everything that I'm doing right now, uh, but let it finish. So right now it's done. All the subfolders and folders. The beauty of doing what I'm, I'm doing here is if I add a file, let's say I have uh, on my music stuff, I have the test one, two, three folder and I add another one. So instead of me manually copying and pasting that on my USB stick, what this uh, script is going to do, it's going to check this folder to see if that's in there. If it's not, it's not going to replicate everything. It's just going to replicate what's missing. Okay, so I'm going to use the same script. And there it is. I can back this up if you like. So all that thing did was this script that I wrote, and I'll show you this all from scratch is it goes into that folder and says, okay, I already have a music folder. I don't need to recreate the wheel. I'm just gonna see what's different. And that folder is different, so here you go. I'm just gonna send the one folder and all of these matched. No changes were done except for that. That's the benefit of not doing something like this. Right click and copy and go in here and paste. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm going to delete all, all those because I'm going to use this as my guinea pig for today. So how is all this magic done? Well, it's done through the magic of what, what uh, we call rsync, remote sync. So I created a folder called my scripts. You can create whatever you want. I created one script and I replicated that script by changing things in it. So let's look at Bob's backup for a second and I'll basically do this from scratch also on how to create launchers. But that particular launcher, if I hit edit, uh, is pointing to a file that is located in documents, my scripts called 
Back Dock Music USB 1. This one right here. Oops, sorry. This one. That is the script that caused that to copy that music folder. Okay, so let's look at the script itself. This is done with a text editor. You can create these manually, but once you create your first script and it works, you can actually replicate this by copying the script and changing the stuff in it. That's the cool part about creating scripts. Now, the first thing you need to make sure that is you have your bin bash statement. Bash stands for born again shell. Okay. You can always stop this video, do a screenshot, hand copy this, better yet subscribe. So put in the bin bash statement first, if you're creating one from scratch. And I'll show you how to create one from scratch in a little bit here. Let me break the line for you, the second line down for you. So our sync is remote sync. Some people use that to sync from computer to computer, folders and files. I'm using it for the purposes of syncing my personal folders, in this case, Bob's, over to a USB device. In this case, a hard drive that's connected to a USB cable. All right, so that's the rsync command. rsync, again, stands for remote sync. And I do encourage that you look this up on the internet yourself. The rsync command has many options. This is the archive bit or archive option. So it's rsync space dash a space. And then there's a tilde music. Tilde just means my home folder or Bob's home folder music. In other words, Bob's home folder. This is the same statement pretty much. So the tilde is found on your keyboard where your, your numeric keys are on the top row right next to the left of the one. Normally you would have to hit the shift key to activate that to get a tilde. So all that says is um, rsync space dash a space tilde forward slash music. Now whenever you're doing stuff like this, this is called source and this is destination. In other words, you're copying something, syncing it to a destination. So that has to be spelled the same way as your folders if you're doing a folder. And most people do that instead of doing individual files. But music folder is spelled this way, so you can open up a file manager if you're creating scripts, for instance. You need to put a space after that, though, and then put uh, forward slash and whatever the name of your user. Now, how did I find this rather easily? Well, take your mouse pointer and point at that USB device. Do you see where it says forward slash media Bob USB one? That's all you need. That's the human readable part. Forget about the uh, forward slash dev at, uh, and the rest of that stuff. You're using the human readable part, which is media Bob. Bob is my user. USB one is what this is called. That's what you want on the tail end of this. Okay, so that's that's the script for that. Now, how did I create the script? Because I'm going to delete this on purpose. So we have nothing in here where you want to create a, a script that points to this or a launcher that points to that uh, music backup. Again, this is the one I've just been showing. Okay. So this again is called back doc music SB one. It's a mouthful. You can call it whatever you want. Right click, create launcher. This is on my desktop. First thing you need to do, to do is what are you going to call it? I'm going to call that back. Um, music and I'll call it the name of this particular um, or do I want to use that in a comment so I'll just put back music and on the comment bo box I'll say two USB one I can put a space in there it's just a comment the command is literal though you have to literally go and find your script where did you save it so in my case it's in my home Bob documents my scripts, so let's find that. My scripts, and we are calling that backdoc music one. That's this one, and I hit open. Do you want to put an icon? Because if you don't, it'll just have a gearbox, just like that. It's done. It's still working, but it's basically replicating right now. All right, so. Um, you can also edit these launchers, right click, edit, and then you can either edit the name, the comment, the icon. 
So I'm going to give it a different icon. When you click the icon, give the system a second or so, it goes searching for all your icons. You can even bring your own personal folders if you like. But I'm going to pick something from the system. We'll just pick um, something here, anything. How about that bunny? Why not? And hit save. It's the same script no matter what. All right, so it's done replicating and we have the test folder and then we're going to add a text file in here. Or I'm going to add a text file. I'm going to call that uh, uh, test one. And I'm going to throw some text in there. Just a bunch of gibberish. Okay, it doesn't have an extension as you noticed. That's, um, that's allowed in Linux. Uh, if you are going to take this file and copy this over to a Microsoft system or Mac, you probably want to rename that like uh, test txt or something like that. All right, more importantly, it doesn't have that file yet. But if I rerun that script, there it is. If I go back in here, or back in here, it doesn't matter. It's still here. So what I didn't do was I did not go manually over here and uh, what do we do in music? So I would copy and then paste, right? You would be continually pasting files. What the rsync does is it goes and checks this folder and says, ah, is there a difference in here? Yes, I added that file. Well, do you have that folder already on your destination? I do. Well, let's look in there. Oh, you're missing this replicate. It didn't replicate anything else. That's why it makes rsync very fast when it does this. Let's talk about some more scripts. So I have this one here. Okay, this one replicates one, two, three, four folders. They all start with the same statement. They all start with the same rsync command. That one just says document, music, pictures, and, and downloads all go into the same destination. USB 1. USB 1. Okay, I'm going to actually delete this so it's uh, back to just blank. So I'm going to run this one here. This is a pointer to that script. In other words, if I do the edit launcher part and go and find out what file this is using, it says my script back personal one. USB one. So let's find that script. So it says back personal USB, back personal USB one. It's this script here. So what that script is going to do when I actually run it on that launcher there, it's going to copy the documents, the music, the pictures and downloads. This will take a while, but I'm going to do it anyways. So I could change the name here after I created the script because this is a launcher. That's a script. The, the launcher points to the script. The cool thing about this is you can add it, edit this icon business. And you can also edit the script. All right, so I'm going to hit cancel and run this. But before I do that, I'm wanting to let you see it. It'll start creating folders. So the thing about formats, while well, this thing is creating folders, I'm going to talk about the format command while it's actually running. So basically, we're going to multitask right now. All right, so whenever you are formatting either your um, hard drives or your USB sticks, I'm not going to perform it for you, and I'm going to let this thing finish, is I'm going to point to the file formats. The FAT32 stands for File Allocation 32, and it's the most compatible if you're trying to share files for, uh, with not only Linux, but Microsoft Windows and Macs. Hopefully that's clear. If you decide to format your USB target device, in other words, your USB stick or hard drive with extension 4, don't expect to insert that on your Microsoft and Mac machines and be able to read that hard drive. You will also have one more item to deal with, which is called permissions. If you want it fully compatible, FAT32 doesn't require permissions. And it, more importantly, you can open that drive up or USB stick on those three particular operating systems. So this is finished. It's still blinking. I can see my light is still blinking. So it's still creating because I got lots of wallpaper in here and I got lots of uh, music files and you can see all the stuff that it's replicating. It's quite a few things. Now it's finished. 
because my light, my drive, my USB connected hard drive has a light on it and it will flash when it's being accessed or written to. But more importantly, there's a lot of stuff in here. You know. Anyways, I'm going to switch this up now, folks. Or should I, should I create one from scratch first? Let's do one from scratch. Let's create a script. All right, so um, open up my script folders and uh, I'll pick one of these. It doesn't matter what it is. So I'm going to use this as my reference and I'm going to close this. And I'm going to walk over to my MX menu and type in TXT for text. And you can see that you have Featherpad available for you to write text files. Okay, so you can uh, make uh, or download other text editors, but I'm going to use the one that's built in. So since I opened this other one already, I'm going to take it and pull it out of here and drop it. So all I all I did was separate the two boxes. Okay, this is still the same thing. It's still Featherpad. So it's untitled. This is like raw information. So what I'm going to do is on the first line, I'm going to start with pound explanation point right above the one you have to hit the shift key forward slash bin forward slash bash okay so if you can muster that you can create any scripts pretty much so i'm going to make this video a little bit faster but i'll just cover this up um, basically what i'm going to do is you can hand type these in yourself okay and i'll walk through it really quick so it's rsync space dash a space forward i'm sorry tilde and uh, this says bob's work stuff whatever the name of your folder but i'm going to change this up now and uh, let's pick a different folder what do i want to uh, sync up how about if we do downloads all right so let's change the name of this that's the source Will that work? No, it's not spelled right. Oh, okay, spelling does count, absolutely. It's paramount. Okay, so let's double check it. It's got an uppercase D, uppercase D, and where are we sending it to? Uh, USB one, or is there another device in your machine? Oh, well, let's change this up. I'm gonna eject that. Let me see what I have for a USB stick that's already formatted. I think I have one. Sorry. I'll let this thing mount. And it's called USB junk. There's no files on it. Cool. So we will call this one USB lowercase junk. That also matters. Again, I'm pointing to this device. It says media Bob USB junk. USB is in uppercase, junk is in the lowercase, so that matches. I'm going to uh, click Save As, and uh, I'm going to save it in Bob Document Scripts, and uh, call that Junk One, and hit Save. Now I just changed that to a red color and that to a purple, uh, basically because it's a script file. Now there's a couple things you need to be aware of when you do this. First of all, you need to write a launcher, but the second thing is you make sure that the file is executable. So what I'm going to do in this case under junk is I'm going to leave this file alone and I'm going to create a launcher first and let you see what kind of error you get. So Bob's junk. And uh, that is going to USB junk. And command would be the script itself. Again, my script, and it is called junk1. And junk1 has a problem already before I start. Do I want an icon to go with it? Sure, why not? And we'll pick um, that one. I, I'm just arbitrarily picking icons. So I'm going to try to execute that. Okay, it has failed to run. The reason that it failed because it says permission denied. The reason for that is because I forgot to do something. So this is very common when you start doing scripts. So don't panic. All right. So right click on the file. First of all, is it written right? It is. 
It's written right. It has all the pointers. The source is download. The destination is USB junk and it's spelled correctly, right? Yeah, it looks like it's spelled correctly. So what's wrong with the script? Ah, it's not executable. Right click, permissions, properties, sorry. Right click on the file, properties, permissions. You need to allow this file to be run as a program. Now the script will work. There we go. That was all that was wrong with it. So anytime you write scripts, make sure that when you get done, that you make sure that your scripts have the permissions of executing as a program. Okay, that's the key word here. Can you customize these scripts, uh, the existing scripts? You can. So I will clear out that folder. Keep in mind, this is not my USB drive. This is a USB stick. And that stick is uh, 14 gigabytes. It's a fairly decent size one. So I'm gonna to go to my documents for a second. I'm gonna alter a script. I'm gonna take uh, the, the music, uh, yeah, we'll do the music one. And I'm gonna right click and copy it and then paste it. So it says copy one of that. So I'm gonna rename that right away because I wanna to, want to be able to, um, so this would be um, music, music, music junk is what I'm gonna call that. You can call these scripts whatever you want. So um, I'll just rename that MJ. How's that? So MJ now has been renamed and I open up the script itself by double clicking on it and you can see the syncing is gonna be music, but we're gonna, are we gonna change that up or do we just wanna, yeah, let's leave music or do we, I wanna change the folder name. Well, let's do Bob's, um, let's, find out how about Bob's work stuff how's that that would be a fast sync because that one has the big name on it so I'm gonna right click next to the music and hit backspace and change the name to Bob Bob's work stuff now the reason I'm using that complex name is just to make you understand that it is always a good idea to make your name contiguous in other words don't put spaces in there It'll confuse the script. You've got to do other things if you do that. So try to keep it one uh, contiguous name. In other words, uh, something that doesn't have spaces in it. Now that one is incorrect because uh, we can't send it to USB junk because this has USB one on it. However, if I just change the tail end to junk, again, you point out the device you're sending it to and this should now work. So Bob's work stuff, let's double check our folder name and we're gonna hit save. So my script is called, what, what, what was that name again? Uh, MJ. So now we create a launcher and call that MJ and uh, back up to USB junk. We need to uh, tell it what to look for. Documents, scripts, MJ, open. Do I want an icon? Let me just leave the gear symbol to make it faster and we'll run that. Okay, that's already copying and it's done. That's how quickly I created a script that was existing. I did, all I did was copy information and alter it. The only thing you need to make sure is to always double check your permissions to make sure it's allowed that is a program. So one more time as a recap, folks, make sure that you uh, do the bin bash. You can always back up my videos. They have timelines on them. Better yet, subscribe. Rsync has many commands or options, but this is the archive one. So again, in this case, so MJ is uh, working with Bob's work stuff. Let's uh, walk over to Bob's work stuff and create another document. Or well, how about a, just a folder? We'll create a folder. Jump one, two, three. Okay. So right now Bob's work stuff doesn't have a folder. Okay. We're good to go on that. I'm going to run that script. That folder is now in there. That's how quickly that was done. It didn't bother copying anything else because it, the rsync command went and checked. Oh, the only thing different is that, send that over.
from Bob's work stuff. Hopefully you found this uh, informative. Thank you for watching, folks.